and all the attacks of the enemy for your good. A fascinating verse, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 19 says this. There must also be heresies among you. For those who are, that those who are approved may be manifested among you. Now we think of heresy as a false doctrine, and it is. But in the original Greek word, the word haeresis, or which we get heresy, literally means a faction in, a, in referring to here a faction of division in a congregation, a disunity. And what it's saying is the enemy introduces heresies in the body, not only heresies of doctrine, but heresies of division. He's the author, not God. But the Greek word heresy also comes from the word choice. In other words, you've got a choice. It's a test when false doctrine comes. It's a test. You've got a choice. When division prop comes up or gossip comes up, it's a test for you of how you respond. And here it says there must be these things to prove who is approved, who is called. And I will bring out those who are true. That's what it's saying. You know, Harold Camping went on the radio and how many people just went along with his messed up doctrine? It was their choice. They were accountable. They had the Bible. Even the works of the enemy provide tests so you can advance in God. The enemy is called the accuser of the brethren. One of his tactics is to accuse, to, to put plant gossip, slander in the kingdom, in the camp of God, one person against the other or one people against the other. Conflict, slander, betrayal people against you, accusation, know that it's the enemy and know it's a test. The problem is in the situation. It's not even ultimately the people, even though if they fell, they fell. It's a for you, it's a test. God is looking how you're going to respond to that test. Are you going to retaliate? You get angry, fearful, discouraged, panic, get all depressed or trust God and praise God anyway. Know that, knowing that your approval comes from him. And only what he says matters. No gossip matters. Only what he says, and you overcome. The enemy just, doesn't just attack that way. He attacks through frustration and hindrance and discouragement. He wants you discouraged. But you have to see even, your, even the things that would discourage you, hindrances, obstacles, as a test. How are you going to respond? God will bless. How are you going to respond? Get depressed, get angry, manipulate, jump ahead on your own, or go bring it to Messiah. You know, he said to remember what he said to the woman, came up to him and said and wanted to, his, her daughter to be healed. He said, is it, is it right to, to give the crumbs to the dogs or give, actually give the bread, the children's food to the dogs? She says, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And he says, oh, great is your faith, woman. He was testing her. He was testing her. Are you going to give up? Are you going to give up? You know, Ruth, she's clinging to Naomi. And Naomi saying, get away, go home, go home. And it continuously. And one of them, Orpah, goes home. But Ruth, it says, but Ruth clung. She was being tested by God. Are you going to give up? Are you going to give up because it didn't happen the way you wanted? Or when it happened, it didn't all work out the way you thought? Are you going to give up on, are you going to give up? Or are you going to press on in God? The enemy comes against you with all these things. Know that even when you're tempted by the enemy, it's a test. If you, pa if you turn it down, you pass the test. God blesses you. In everything you do, in a sense, there, God is watching how you respond. Are you going to be faithful in little? Faithful, because you will be faithful in great. He's looking for you to be faithful in everything, in the least of things. Remember, being at school at the end of the year, May, June, you take your final exams. What happened? That exam, that test, sealed the class. It was over. And hopefully you graduated the test the purpose of the test was not to make you nervous. It was not to produce anxiety. The test was to move you on, to advance you and to finish the first chapter and move you to the next chapter. So with God, the tests in your life aren't to make you anxious. They are to move you on. They are to close one chapter and move you to a higher ground. If you were in school and you refused to take the test, you wouldn't advance. You'd be left back. So in the Lord. If you reject the test, you're not going to pass. You're going to stay. Or if you keep on, you know, if you're going through something and all you do is complain about the problem, I'm telling you, you're not going to pass the test. And what's going to happen is, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be taking it again and again. 
Because if you find yourself coming to the same thing all the time, same thing, same, th same sin, same thing, same situation, hitting your head against the wall, same mistake, you're taking the same test. And if you want to stop taking it, then pass the test. I've known people who, you know, faithful and little. I've known people who were never faithful and little, so they wanted to be faithful much, but they couldn't because they never did that. I know people who were zealous to become members for the wrong reason. They wanted to be in the spotlight. Not many, but there are few. In the, and, and, or, or they wanted something glorious. And they said, listen, okay, but this is where we need help. And, they, and they, well, I'm not going to do that, okay? Well, that's what God does. There's once a man who said he wanted to be part, but only, only if he was in the spotlight. I said, well, so I want to teach. I, teach. I, said, I said, give me an example of your teachings. And he felt he shouldn't have to. And then I listened to it. I said, this is not good, this stuff. I mean, this is not. And I found out, and he ended up leaving. And I ended up getting a call later from another pastor who said this, the same person came to their congregation. Same thing happened, caused a lot of problem. And never, he repeated it actually at least in three or four congregations. I mean, he refused to be faithful. Then he started trying to do it on his own. Don't despise the little things. It's from the little that the big comes. Only in the little can you prove yourself, be faithful in, in what you say. Well, I want this in my life. I want this in my life. Be faithful where you are. Then you'll be faithful there. I want, I want this ministry. I want this. Be faithful in the ministry you have. Be faithful in obeying God now. I want this. I want marriage. Be faithful in being single. God will give you the best one way or the other. God is looking for the one who is being faithful in little and faithful in things that are not theirs yet. They don't own it yet. But with getting no credit, no glory, no praise, just doing it for God. It means if you refuse to be faithful, it, you know, people, dis, it disqualifies you. If you're never willing to start and be faithful in little, you'll disqualify yourself from great things. You know, I didn't just go into... 